just hearing via the Reuters news agency, uh, Ioni, that Joe Biden is saying that he supports Vice President Kamala Harris as his replacement. Not a surprise, I suppose, but um, the, the party will, will want to get on with this quickly. The Republicans, meanwhile, will make hay from all of this. That's right. Uh, I can read you the statement that Joe Biden has put out. He has, as you say, endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris. He said, my fellow Democrats, I've decided not to accept the nomination and to focus all my duties on my duties as president for the remainder of my term. My very first decision as the party ne nominee in 2020 was to pick Kamala Harris as my vice president. He also goes on to say it's been the best decision I've made. And today he wants to offer his full support and endorsement for Kamala to be the nominee of the Democrats this year. He said it's time to come together and beat Trump. And in his words, let's do this. Now, it's interesting. There's kind of echoes there of uh, you might remember that famous clip when Joe Biden won uh, the last presidential election. There was a clip of Kamala Harris that kind of went viral at the time where she said, Joe, we did this. And clearly he's now sort of almost reflecting that back to her. He wants her to be the one who takes this baton on now to try and beat Donald Trump. And I think that was really the growing concern, as we've discussed already, about whether he was able to beat Donald Trump. Uh, the polls were certainly suggesting that he wasn't in a good position to. Um, there was widespread concern across the Democratic Party about whether he would even be able to uh, win the Senate, the House, uh, with him as leader. So I think he has clearly decided to make that endorsement very swiftly. I think we're probably going to see now a series of sort of statements from him as this resignation uh, sort of news develops. I think he'll be wanting to kind of make a series of statements, probably as well a public speech when he is feeling uh, strong enough to do so. Of course, he has been recovering, as we've discussed, from COVID. Um, but I think one of the reasons for sort of getting this endorsement out the door very quickly has been to try to encourage as little chaos and disruption as possible. Now, I think he wants, as he's outlined in the statement, the party to try and sort of resolutely get behind her. The question will be, do they? Is there any, you know, are there, are there Democrats who just don't want to endorse Kamala Harris, feel like she has been imposed on them as a candidate? Um, and I think that will be the question that sort of follows Democrats around now for the next couple of days. Uh, we're also uh, hearing again via the Reuters news agency that uh, Donald Trump has been speaking to one of the American networks, CNN, and he says that he thinks that Vice President Harris will be easier to defeat than Joe Biden after Mr Biden decided to step down. I mean, we would expect him to say that, wouldn't we? That's right. Um, interestingly, though, over the last couple of weeks, obviously, these are only polls. Polls only suggest things. They don't give with certainty what would happen. But there have certainly been polls suggesting that uh, Kamala Harris was actually better placed to defeat Donald Trump than Joe Biden was, given the concern around his health, his fitness for office. Um, I think one of the things that's interesting, though, as well, over the weekend, there was a number of reports suggesting uh, that the Trump campaign were gearing up uh, a series of attacks towards Kamala Harris, almost in anticipation of the fact that he might resign and she would be uh, the person that he endorses to replace him. And I think we are likely now to see over the next couple of weeks, we'll see direct attacks made from the Trump campaign on Kamala Harris. Obviously, all their attention now will be on how they um, show that they are better placed to win this election than she is, because a lot of their, a lot of their sort of election attacks so far have centred on Joe, uh, that infamous phrase we've heard a lot of times now from uh, the former president, Trump, Sleepy Joe, you know, he's certainly kind of played on the criticisms of Joe Biden and his, uh, well, sort of how sharp he has been, for example, in some debates and interviews. Now, I think all that energy is going to be diverted into trying to undermine attack uh, Kamala Harris and and sort of her, um, you know, her image, her fitness for office as well from Trump's side. Of course, it is important to remember that although um, Joe Biden has endorsed Kamala Harris, she isn't yet the candidate. We are still uh, waiting to find out what Democrats will do over the next couple of days and whether or not she will actually end up being formally endorsed and nominated as the candidate. Meanwhile, um, the US Senate Democratic leader um, Chuck Schumer has said that... Um, Biden once again put his country, his party and our future first. This is where we get the, the reframing, that PR exercise, isn't it, where, where the Democrats, of course, frame this as, as this is Joe Biden doing the honourable thing in the interests of the United States, whereas the Republicans will make, will, will make uh, capital out of it by saying this party's in disarray. How can you re-elect them? 
That's right. We were talking about this just moments ago, weren't we, that essentially now what is likely to happen is even some of these senior figures who were only days ago saying that President Biden should step aside are now coming out to defend his record and defend his legacy. And I think that is something we will see more of, as I mentioned earlier, because it is certainly uh, likely that after this week, these weeks and weeks of chaos, of disunity, uh, the party will now want to show that they are fit for office, that they are the party of government. And I think as a result, you will see lots more people trying to draw on his record or draw on things like the Inflation Reduction Act, like investment in uh, creating new jobs across the country, particularly in some states that were traditionally Republican as well. I think those are things that he, uh, him and his allies, even his critics, will want to try and show in the next couple of days to make this resignation as sort of, uh, I suppose, as, as sort of chaos-free as, as possible. Um, I think, though, there is an element to which it has already almost gone too far. It's hard to now avoid, uh, I think, for the party, this image of disunity of chaos after we've seen this momentum build over the last couple of weeks. But certainly I think now the Democrats' attention will swiftly turn to trying to you know, really kind of show who their next candidate is going to be, make sure there is as much unity as possible, but also, as we've touched on there, reflect on, on Joe Biden's legacy, what Democrats can do if in power. I think that is the message they will want to try and send over the days to come. Let's just recap, if you're just joining us here on uh, BBC News, this uh, breaking news, this developing story that we're reporting tonight is that Joe Biden has decided to withdraw from the 2024 presidential race. And as we were just reporting, um, as of last night, Saturday night, he had planned to stay in the race. And the Reuters news agency are saying that a source familiar with this matter has now revealed that on Sunday afternoon, senior staff were told that Joe Biden was in fact withdrawing. And the quote says, last night the message was proceed with everything full speed ahead, but around a quarter to two this afternoon, the president told his senior team that he had changed his mind. So I only, it'll be fascinating to learn who he discussed this with that brought about that change of heart overnight. That's right, because there was growing speculation and reports over the weekend uh, that not just close aides of his, uh, not just close allies like uh, the former president, Barack Obama, but also members of his family, his sort of really close inner circle had been discussing this issue with him, also discussing even potentially plans for him to stand down, how they would sort of manage that uh, going forward. So I think there's probably been, well, there have inevitably been a series of discussions that have taken place. But I think one of the things that is really interesting is just how quickly uh, this has sort of happened. As you say, in the last 24 hours, there's been this sort of tone shift because it was only, I think, about 24 hours ago that he himself was saying he was looking forward to getting back campaigning this week. His campaign was saying that. Now, of course, there there is an element to which if somebody is about to resign, of course, until the moment they actually do, uh, they are going to carry on as normal, act like things are normal. But I think the sort of defiance that he was going about those statements uh, did it imply to some people that he was digging in for a bit longer. Um, and so the fact that he has now dropped this in the middle of the afternoon on Sunday when he's not at the White House, he's been isolating at his holiday home in Delaware has certainly come as a surprise to a lot of people here. Um, and I think that is kind of, as you say, it will be interesting to find out more about what it was in the last moment that changed his mind from his statement. He stresses that this was about essentially um, trying to put the country and the party first and do what is in the best interests of the United States. And I think that's a message we'll hear again from him when he does address the public, address his party at some point. He has said that he will speak to the nation later this week and he will talk in more detail about his decision. So I think we will get more information from him personally uh, about what led him to take that decision in the 11th hour.